There were quite a few concerning things that Trisha Paytas said about David Dobrik and the vlog squad. And one of my personal concerns after watching a lot of different YouTubers and as they continue to grow and keep trying to top themselves, one of my concerns is what happened to Logan Paul when he went to Japan in that forest. So I'm really worried about where David Dobrik and the vlog squad is headed. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health and what I like to do, I like to pull different topics from the YouTube community and try to teach you how to improve your mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So before I get started talking about why I'm worried about David Dobrik and the vlog squad and the whole YouTube machine that people get caught up in, um, yes, yes, I know. The vlogs were deleted. Trisha Paytas deleted her video. I get it, I understand. But anyways, I do wanna send a reminder and shameless plug, my audiobook for Rewire Your Anger is out now. And some of the stuff I talk about is how to manage your anger so you don't do something that you're gonna regret, all right? So if you struggle with anger, if you do things that you regret and wish you could take back, Go ahead and check out the book. It's $7.99. It comes bundled with the ebook, and I give a bunch of different practical methods to manage your anger so you, you can control your impulses just a little bit more, all right? And the next thing I want to address real quick, a lot of people are saying, you know, to talk about what Trisha Paytas said right here about Brandon Calvillo. There's people dating Brandon in their friend group was dating a high schooler last year. She was 17 years old. And when I would talk about this with like David, he would literally be like, oh, see, it's a big deal. He's 24, like she's 17. Like, you know, just cause it's the law, like a year, like six months and six months she'll be 18. I'm like, it's disgusting. Like people have found this out and like Brandon will call David and be like, oh, like you gotta, you gotta delete these comments about her age and stuff like that because she was in high school when they started like dating and hooking up. Like, it's this whole like weird thing and I've told David this so many times and for him to be like I didn't know it's like that's like an evil person and that's what I was trying to explain to Jason like that's an evil person. All right so I'm not really going to address it like he may or may not have done this like I'm not here to like speculate about that stuff there's no evidence no young woman has come forward and said yeah I was underage dating Brandon but if if this happened, then yeah, that's clearly messed up and it should be addressed, all right? Because obviously there is a power dynamic. And I guess one of the first topics I'll talk about, like I've been watching David Dobrik for not as long as most of you, but Tristan got me into David Dobrik and I've been watching him. And I see that, you know, some of the guys, like Dom in particular, in recent vlogs, he's been sleeping with a lot of women, right? And, you know, some of them are sleeping with, like, fans and things like that, and they joke and have these stories. But, you know, there's obviously, a, you know, a power dynamic there, right? And it's not very equal. So, you know, like, if, if women want to sleep with these dudes, go for it. Do yo thing. But that's one of the reasons that I am concerned, you know? Um, one of the reasons I'm concerned about David Dobrik and the Vlog Squad is the influence that they have on people like like i i'm a i'm a grown man like i'm an adult i'm 33 years old i watch them and to be honest like it reminds me it reminds me a lot of my younger days when i was <laughs> when i was a full-blown alcoholic all right like i see what they're like i see what they do and they get messed up and they like mess around and goof off and it looks like people are getting hurt and stuff and they laugh about it and all that like that's a lot of the stuff i did when i was in my early 20s so can i fault them for that I don't know, like, is it dangerous? Of course it is. So like the influences that they're having on young people, like basically one of the things that, and like when I make these videos, they're for you and I want you to monitor what you're watching and how it's influencing you. Like watching some gigantic YouTubers doing this, it's going to justify your behavior, right? Like you see David Dobrik and the Vlog Squad, like they have run-ins with the cops and they laugh about it and stuff. Like, like something that you need to get very clear in your brain right now is that, if David Dobrik or any member of the vlog squad goes to jail, they will be out very quickly. You, not being a millionaire, <laughs> you're gonna go to jail, and unless your parents bail you out, you're probably gonna stay there for a while, all right? So, 
I've made videos recently about things like, you know, social cognitive theory, where, you know, we've seen how what people watch can influence their real life behavior. So that is one of my concerns. And as I mentioned, me being an alcoholic in recovery, I've been sober for about six and a half years. Hi, my name's Chris. If you haven't met me yet, I'm a recovering alcoholic and drug addict, is that you know, there's not enough out there to really know if they're struggling, um, if any of the members are struggling with alcoholism. But, like, Tristan, wasn't it Zane who, like, went to the hospital or something like that? Zane was in the hospital. Yeah, he walked, yeah. He walked through fire. Yeah, oh, yeah. And, like, yeah, <laughs> she reminded me that they walked through fire and things like... So, something that you guys need to understand, like, part of what I do, you know, working in addiction treatment and just trying to be an advocate for mental health and addiction is is that you need to understand this. Okay, so right now, on average, and I haven't seen a new report yet, but on average, about over 70,000 people died from the opioid epidemic in the United States, all right? So people look at that number. That is the number that is just shoved in your face. But there are tens of thousands of people who die from other substances. Now, one of the numbers that is always, always skewed is how many people die from alcoholism. And here's why. Most people do not die from alcohol poisoning, okay? It's possible, but it's not happening all that much. You know, you, you know, a lot, like luckily it's caught, like people do die, thousands and thousands of people do die in this country. But what I mean by the statistics are skewed is that most people who die from alcoholism, it's alcohol related accidents, all right? It doesn't take much for you to, you know, do a quick Google search and hear about like college students who, you know, were going through like, like they were just like binge drinking or something like that and someone drowned in a lake or whatever. So those stats don't necessarily go to deaths um, because of alcohol. And I hope that makes sense. You gotta think about drunk driving accidents and all of that, right? But the other number that isn't really included in those statistics is health problems as a result of alcoholism. Alcohol is one of the most dangerous substances um, when it comes to what it does to your body. Like you can actually die from alcohol withdrawal, but it can cause issues with your heart, with your liver, with your kidneys, all sorts of stuff, okay? Like when I first got sober, I had congestive heart failure. That's one of the reasons I followed up with my doctor. So like that was six and a half years ago and thank God my heart is in much better shape now, but alcohol was killing me based on how much I was drinking. So one of the things is that alcoholism isn't really looked at as this like disease of addiction type thing. When people think of addiction, they think of like, you know, heroin or prescription medications. And, you know, since alcohol is like the most legal substance out there, it's very easy to justify it. So you look at David Dobrik, you know, the vlog squad and what they're doing, like it's easy to say, oh, we're just young and partying and stuff like that. But we don't know if anybody has a problem and I don't wanna speculate that. But again, I wanna to talk to you about that. So if you're somebody who is obsessed with the David Dobrik vlogs because you can relate and you and your friends like to be all wild and zany, like it's important to look for the symptoms of possible alcoholism. Because when we see all of the stunts that they're doing and the things that they're doing for the vlog, like it's possible that someone could die because like that's literally what Trisha Paytas said in her video that she's worried that somebody is going to die, all right? So the last thing I wanna talk about is this whole back and forth that we're seeing right now, the videos got deleted and everything like that. But you see, you know, when like I really felt for Trisha when she was, you know, crying in her video, because they they pressure Trisha into doing things, but they pressure each other into doing things and say, it's for the vlog, it's for the vlog, it's for the vlog. Like, trust me, what, what Logan Paul did was sick, was disgusting, but like, I understand where his headspace was. Like when you get caught up in this YouTube machine as these big YouTubers do, you're trying to, you're trying to one up yourself. You're trying to do bigger, 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 bigger things. And like, where does it stop? And more people, more people often than not, and this is all of you as well, you keep pushing the limits until it's too late, right? Logan Paul learned that lesson. And when I see David Dobrik and the vlog squad, I'm like, dang, I don't think they're gonna learn that lesson until it's too late. Now, do I think they're gonna go to Japan and do something stupid? No, but I think we're gonna see something on par with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is going to be something that I like just, 
I've seen people, you know, go down this path. And something that I'm doing as a YouTuber and watching the YouTube community is you see trends, you see patterns, you see all these things. And like, they are definitely on that road. So I don't know, maybe Jason being the <laughs> the grandpa of the group. <laughs> that was, that was, oh, that's funny though. That's funny. Tristan's laughing, you can't see her. <laughs> like maybe you just say, yo, let's dial it back a little bit. You know what I mean? But there are bigger things to worry about rather than, you know, the views and all of that. And something that I always say, like, you know, we gotta check our motives, we gotta check our intentions. Like, why are we making videos? Why are we doing this? Like. There is definitely, you know, a need for, you know, David Dobrik and the Vlog Squad because it's entertaining, right? But it's like, at what cost? You see what I'm saying? So those those are kind of my thoughts on that, but I want you to think about how this affects your life. Like when I'm talking about how you keep pushing the limits until it's too late, like, are you overworking yourself? Are you working yourself into a, a place where you're gonna have a mental breakdown? Like, this is a thing. Everybody needs therapy. Everybody needs therapy. The problem with most people, here, like, let me let, let, come here, come here. Let me let you in on this secret. The problem with most people is that they don't go to therapy until they freaking, they snap. You know what I mean? Like, you need to say, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, the, the wheels are getting a little bit wobbly. I need to get in there now. So check in with yourself. Don't keep pushing yourself until it gets to that breaking point. Early interventions are key when it comes to mental health, all right? Talk to your doctor, talk to your insurance company, find a therapist, there's always a link down below for BetterHelp Online Therapy, which is a service that I personally use. Tristan's used it, a lot of people use it, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You're all amazing. And if you would like to help support the channel and get exclusive perks, discounts, free books, all that stuff, click or tap right there, all right? Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.